I grew up with dreams of wanting to become an actress. I loved being different, having all eyes on me, and standing out. But life had other plans, and being in the Navy, my uniform was by design meant for me to blend in, not stand out. And although I wouldn't dare to admit it, I have never been oblivious to the privilege that my coworkers claimed I had. Jokingly, they would say, geez, I wish I was a girl so everyone would be nice to me too. Or, you don't know how good you have it, shipmate. Being military police, I was one of the very few girls in my division, so yes. I admit to getting away with a little bit more than my male counterparts, like walking around with my nails out of regulation, <laughs> while the guys would get hemmed up for not shaving that morning. It was leniency like that that made my years in the Navy doable. And not only that, I have always had a good sixth sense when it came to reading people. It helped with my success being able, con being able to consider my approach when interacting with different personalities. While it did require trial and error, I was able to become a well-liked sailor at every command I was at. My childhood dream of acting still lingered, but it was easier to re-enlist again and again because I had good relationships with the people who mattered. Life was good. At some point during the pandemic, I got wrapped up in the world of filming skits and funny videos in my free time. I would send the videos to my friends, coworkers, and some family, when one day I had a cousin tell me, Brianna, you should post these on social media. TikTok would love you. Hmm. I thought about it, but I didn't really care about entertaining strangers. I made these videos because I thought they were funny and these ideas would zip around my brain until I got them out of my system. The only way I could do that was to create them on camera. Well, eventually, a couple of months went by and I was no longer satiated by the reactions from family and friends. I started to hear my cousin's words over and over again. TikTok would love you. So just to test what he said, I did a little research and I downloaded TikTok. Once I got my footing, I posted an earlier video that I created just to see what reaction I would get. I waited and waited and waited. A few hours went by, and I had maybe 90 views and no likes. I didn't feel the love. But what I did feel was a desire to do what I do best, and that was to read the room, or the audience, so to speak. I wanted to experiment. I wanted to put that trial and error to use and get these people to respond positively. I'm a very goal-driven person, and this was like a game to me, a challenge. I began by posting more videos and drove myself crazy testing the engagement fluctuations. At this point, the three videos that I posted were all videos in regular clothes, jeans, and t-shirt. But the style of my content hadn't really changed much. It was mostly voiceover videos that were popular at the time. About a week into my experiment, I wanted to test how TikTokers would respond to a video of me in uniform. So I posted a video of myself at work that was captioned, how girls flirt in the military. I'm from New York, so I've gotten used to comments that I'm aggressive as it is, but being a woman in the military, it unlocked a whole new level of said aggression. The video contained 17 very explicit words and lasted all of six seconds. I closed the app for the day and went back to work so I could collect my data later. My 12-hour workday went by and in a state of exhaustion, I pulled into my driveway and didn't worry about social media. I saw a coworker's name pop up on my phone. Hmm. We just got off of work. What could he possibly want now? I answered the phone and immediately heard, yo, why are you on World Star right now? <laughs> I've heard of World Star before, but I only knew of it as a website that posted a bunch of random fight videos, which doesn't interest me. Confused, I said, World Star, is it someone who looks like me fighting there? He said, no, a video of you in uniform is on World Star and it has three million views. I couldn't believe it. I immediately got on my TikTok and saw that the video I posted earlier in the day was being shared and liked, and the comments were full of crying, laughing emojis, rel relatable stories, and of course, a little bit of hate. 
I was so interested to know what I said or what I did that generated this insane response in a matter of hours. I switched to Instagram. 4,000 new follow requests. My mind was blown. I had gone viral. I knew this was my 15 minutes of fame and I was intent on enjoying every second of it. In the following months, I felt like a local celebrity on base. People would come to me and ask, are you the girl from that video? But to me, that translated to, oh my God, look at Brianna, that famous TikToker. Can I have your autograph? I love the recognition and I kept chasing that high. I started making more videos at work and they started to become a bit more frowned upon by the masses. Comments like, why is she doing that in uniform? Are you allowed to be on your phone at work? Wow, she has a potty mouth, that is so inappropriate. What can I say, I swear like a sailor. While I'm relishing in all of my newfound fame, my command had a switch in leadership. These higher ups got wind of my videos and they were clear on two things. They weren't impressed by my content and they didn't find anything funny. I was told to delete the videos because I was making the Navy look bad. How could I make the entire Navy look bad when I was one girl posting funny videos? My videos weren't even about the Navy. I was just wearing the uniform. I didn't think my new leadership had the authority to make me delete the videos and after all, my content was still gaining traction. TikTok paid me a whole 76 cents. <laughs> so, naturally, I wanted to see what would happen next. Two days later, I went into work and went to the armory to get my day started. Instead of giving me my ammunition, the armorer said, sorry, Noel, you're on the do not arm list. Because he didn't have any more information for me, I went to my supervisor to see what was going on. Oh, he said, I can't tell you the details because the security officer has to talk to you first. <sighs> my frustration was building because the only time someone was on the do not arm list is when they were in legal trouble or had mental health concerns. My cancellation was officially in progress. I had gone against the grain and I was punished for it. Come to find out by not deleting the videos, I failed to obey a lawful order and thus I was sent to the military's version of court. I was made to delete the videos in uniform and the qualifications that I worked so hard for were taken away and I was back at the bottom rung of the seniority ladder. My pay and my rank were on the line and I was reprimanded for bringing discredit to the Navy. I couldn't believe how big of a deal it was, but what made it worse was that my coworkers and the people who I built good relationships with acted differently around me. Those same people who laughed at my content, gave me a big head from the compliments and supported me were now like strangers who ostracized me. It was like they saw me as a criminal and they acted as if they would catch the trouble bug by talking to me, so they stayed away. I essentially walked around with a scarlet letter on me and this started my descent into a crushing low in my life. I felt like an outcast at work and I didn't even have my creative outlet to keep me going. The next two years didn't get any better. No matter what I did, my reputation remained the same. Stay away from Noelle, she's trouble. She thought because she's pretty, she could do what she wants, et cetera, et cetera. The blow had softened over time, but it made me realize that creating content and writing skits and short films is what truly made me happy in that period of time. I knew that the military was never my lifelong path, but once the veil of my privilege was lifted, my childhood dreams of becoming an actress were not just lingering. It was at the forefront of my mind all the time. And it's not that I cracked under the pressure, but this experience shifted my mindset and made me see something other than a life in the Navy. The cancellation led me to not want to re-enlist. It led me to make the decision that after 10 years of being in the Navy, I wanted to get out and become a civilian. Fast forward a year, 2024. I did enjoy my five, not 15 minutes of fame, but I'm no longer looking for that high because I'm living it every day. Each month has truly gotten better and better for me. And while I'm so grateful for the friends that I made, the experience I've had, and the doors that the Navy opened for me, I didn't realize how much I would love being out of the military. Now I'm pursuing a goal, and I'm working every day towards something, 
and it feels so good to be living my version of success. I was signed by a talent agent and manager. I've had amazing opportunities on camera, on stage, and even on a runway. I'm learning how to become a proper filmmaker and transferring to UCLA's film school next fall. I can't believe how far I've come and how passionate I am at pursuing this goal. From my sinking low to my soaring high, I'm so grateful that I was canceled so I could be renewed elsewhere. Does anyone want my autograph? <laughs> that was Brianna Noel.